So with ACTA dead in the water, we can all be very happy, of course. The European Union have rejected it emphatically, and it's off the table for good. So that, of course, is great news. But we shouldn't become complacent because there's no doubt that those who proposed this legislation in the first place, who drafted it, are going to try again. They're going to draft a new variation of this legislation and they're going to try again at some point in the future. So we should be ready for when that happens. Now, I think we need to be clever about this. We needn't just stand in implacable opposition to anything that reeks of copyright protection or anti-piracy because I think we're going to end up marginalizing ourselves if we do that and then we're going to end up being ignored. I think we need to make a clear case as to what sort of legislation we could possibly accept. And I think it's very important therefore to draw a couple of lines in the sand that those who draft the next version of this legislation must not cross. And in order to do so we should look at existing legislation such as the DMCA and where it failed miserably in its intent and where it failed to protect those that should be protected by law. And that is, in any civilized form of legislation, is the person who stands accused. Any civilized form of legislation should be based on a very simple principle. And that is that you should be considered innocent until you're proven guilty. That's the long and short of it. And that is where the legislation such as the DMCA failed miserably. Because it enabled the person making the claim, the person claiming that somebody had violated their copyright, had infringed on their copyright, to simply make the accusation and then the person who stands accused has to scramble in order to prove their innocence in order to get their material reinstated, for example. That is completely intolerable and that is the first point that we need to insist on if we're going to consider any future proposals for this type of legislation. Is it based firmly on the principle that you're innocent until you're proven guilty? If it is clear from the way the legislation has been drafted that this has been taken into account, that's one obstacle to our accepting this kind of legislation out of the way. And the first obstacle leads to the second one. Because of this failure of any such legislation to make the burden of proof be on the shoulders of those who are making the accusations, because of current legislations like the DMCA's failure to do that, they have become tools for censorship. Because all you need to do in order to silence somebody whose opinion you don't agree with, is to fraudulently claim that they have infringed your copyright. And the reason why this is so successful is because it is extremely expensive legally for somebody who stands accused, who then has to prove their innocence, to put all their time, effort and financial effort, money, into presenting, creating this proof, where in actual fact they should have to shoulder no such burden. The burden should be on the accuser to prove that their accusations are valid. Because they don't, these legislation, these types of legislation can be used as censorship tools. And that is the second and the even more important part that needs to be addressed in any proposed legislation. What are the safeguards that will stop your proposed legislation from being used as a censorship tool? How are you going to protect the innocent who end up being accused of copyright infringement simply because the accuser wants to silence them, not because they actually think that they own any of the material that the accused is presenting in their videos, 
their broadcasts or whatever else they are doing. And what is more, what are you going to do about those people who do try to abuse the system? At the moment, the DMCA is very blasé about abuses. When you abuse the system, when you file fraudulent DMCA claims, you pretty much can get away scot-free, especially if you do them anonymously. So what are you going to put in place in your new proposed legislation to ensure that those who abuse the system will have to face legal consequences for what they are doing, have to face punitive action, have to face fines and other financial hardship as a result of their abuse of the system, even in serious enough cases, things such as jail time for those who seek to abuse such legislation in order to censor those whose opinions they disagree with, for example. Show us that you have taken these concerns seriously while you are drafting this legislation, the next ACTA or whatever you're going to call it. Show us that you have taken that seriously. Show us that you have thought about how you're going to tackle that problem and that your legislation is dealing with that problem. And then you will find that maybe your next proposal is going to meet with a lot less opposition than this one did. So, all I can suggest now at this point, now that ACTA has failed so miserably, is for you to go back to the drawing board. Try again.